Ahoy, mortals, it is I, Insanely ADD, back once again with a speed paint. It has been 10 billion years because this thing has just been sitting in my files because it's been waiting for me to do a voiceover for like a year now, I think. Ugh. Not great, right? Anyways, so I started simping for fresh in the meantime. If you don't follow me on like DeviantArt and Tumblr, mostly Tumblr, then you wouldn't have known this. But yeah, my friend, he got me to start simping for fresh. Damn him. Damn you. Anyways, so now I have absorbed all knowledge relating to fresh under fresh <laughs> Lucidia <laughs> hyphenated last name. Part of this was recorded while I was also screen sharing on Discord, so at some points the recording is going to get very mm, jumpy and it's gonna look bad. I'm very sorry, but I couldn't find any way to fix it except making the speed of the speed paint go even faster than normal. So I'm very sorry about the jumpiness. There's nothing I can do. Anyways, I'm going to talk about how much I love Fresh, the bastard. Anyways, um, he doesn't feel anything, but guess what? Too bad. I like him a lot. And there's nothing he can do about it. I mean, he could try killing me, but you know, he's also not real, so... Haha, I get the last laugh. <laughs> Anyways, so Fresh is really great, and there's a lot of things that I think are really cool about him and interesting. And also, there was, uh, so I did some introspection because when I simp for a fictional character, I gotta, like, look deep inside myself, you know? Like, that's a normal thing, right? This is totally normal. Everyone does this. No, but I did some introspection, like, why do I simp for Fresh? Because I was under the impression that like Fresh is kind of like a Sans, but also not really a Sans at the same time. Turns out he's not really a Sans at all anymore. Anyways, I was like, why am I suddenly simping for this character? I've been in this fandom since nearly the beginning and I never simped for him. What is this? This is a black mark upon my papyrus simp history. And turns out that like I did a lot of research on him and he's actually an incredibly interesting and deep character which I think is super cool. And also, like, there's reasons why I simp for Papyrus, and those reasons are I really relate to him. I think that he's got ADHD, most certainly, and some people had canon that as being, like, autistic, because there's a lot of similarities and overlaps between, like, behaviors and stuff. But, like, I just say ADHD because that's what I'm familiar with. I cannot speak on the autism thing, but autistic people say that, so I just wanted to clarify. Absolutely valid of you if you see Papyrus Undertale as autistic. I just see him as ADHD. But I was looking at this through that lens with Fresh, and I was like, hmm, I wonder why. And I was just thinking about it. I was like, oh, okay. It's because we're both uh, wrecks with deep existential crisis related trauma and psychosis, kind of. Because, like, I can feel things. It's just. It's very complicated, I don't want to get into it because this is a YouTube video where I'm talking about how much I want to smooch a fictional skeleton, you know, I shouldn't get too deep. You're not here for that. You're here for handsome skeleton holding flowers that he's going to give to you, right? Fresh doesn't feel most things, but if push comes to shove, they'll occasionally feel and experience emotions. Normally those are only bad emotions, which, you know, God, sucks to be you. At least I can feel mania. So. I was like really looking into his character and it's like, oh wow, he's really interesting. And there's like these things like, um, for instance, there's... The reason why he's not a Sans is because even when he was still possessing a Sans, like back during that era of his character, if I'm going to break this down in some way, back when CQ was still role-playing as him on their blog, which... God, I forget the name of the blog. I think it's like Best 90s Mess or something, something like that. Anyways. There was an event called the Love Ball. It's like a prom where a whole bunch of people roleplay together that they're at a, a, a big old party or whatever, you know, for lots of interactions because it's, it's a really fun get together type thing. And I think that's neat. And at this event, Fresh was going to infect a whole bunch of people with the uh, Fresh Parasites, which he, he spent all night making, you know, in the oven, his easy bake oven. Actually, that'd be, you know what? That'd be fucking hysterical if he made Fresh Parasites like like, he's a parasite. He's probably probably asexual reproduction, which is how they produce more fresh parasites. But in my head, I'm just thinking, God, wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if Fresh was just like, okay, pulls out Easy Bake Oven, time to make more parasites. <laughs> it fits with the aesthetic, too, with the 90s shit. Oh, my God. Oh, that'd be so funny. I would lose it. 
Anyways, so at this event, Fresh is confronted by a different character that looks like a Sans, but is not a Sans. Because this character is like, hmm, I know what you really are. You're not a Sans. And Fresh is like, haha, you got me! No, I'm not. So like, even back when he was still possessing a Sans, Fresh was never really a Sans, because like, the person who's in control is the parasite, you know? And there's other things too, like, since then he's been redesigned, which is the design that I'm using for this. We don't know what his eyes look like in this redesign, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's probably similar enough to what he looked like when he was still sans adjacent. Anyway, so he was redesigned by CQ so they could use him in a original idea that they wanted to do. So he got redesigned to look less like Sans, and this design was actually shown to Toby because CQ emailed him and was like, hey, I want to use this OC I made in an original project, is that okay? And Toby was like, yeah, it's fine, just make him look less like Sans. And so they redesigned them to look less like Sans, and now they look like this. So, by the way, I noticed in one of the posts that CQ made about Fresh, where he's like holding a Furby, that they, CQ, used exclusively they, them pronouns to refer to Fresh, which I think is great. And also, I think this is implying that Fresh uses they, he pronouns, which, you know what? very valid of them. I too use they, he pronouns exclusively, and I will uh, kiss their face. Fresh's face. Anyways, so, and I thought that was really interesting. And at this ball, there's another event that happens to Fresh which really impacts his character a lot, and it's not really talked about in anything, because Fresh is very rarely used for anything except for like comedic side pieces and anything ever, where Fresh comes to terms, or is revealed to Fresh, to be more concise, that they are a fictional character who does things and will only ever continue to exist as long as they are entertaining. And this is kind of terrifying for Fresh because their main motivation is to just keep on living, right? Because they're a parasite and their main thing is like, I just gotta keep on living, which is why the whole 90s persona exists. It's what Fresh perceives to be the most non-threatening kind of uh, attitude they could take up. Like, oh, no one would want to mess with them. They're not threatening, but they're also not worth messing with, you know, right? So, like, that's why the 90s persona exists. It's just a self-defense mechanism, in a way. And, um, but the thing is, is if Fresh is aware that they are a fictional character, then they have to not only consider the possibility of, like, in-universe modes of survival, such as, like, you need to continue to care for the host, to find a new host if the old one breaks, quote unquote, uh, and such. But also, there's meta things you need to take into account to continue your existence then, right? Like if you're a fictional character, then you don't normally have to think about like, oh, I've got to be super entertaining or they'll cancel my show in your day-to-day -day life. But Fresh now has to take these things into consideration, and it's very stressful and existentially terrifying for him. And there's like this really awesome part of the post. Let me find it real quick. Okay, so I found the post, and it's from the blog Best Fresh 90s Mess, which was the roleplay blog that CQ ran. And it was a post where, uh, after the love ball happened, CQ explained, like, uh, broke it all down into a single post for us, what exactly happened and why Fresh is now depressed. And the monologue that Fresh has goes like this. I thought about a lot of stuff lately, you know? All these inner thoughts I ignore or avoid listening to. And I realized, you know, maybe I wasn't looking to help everyone. It was some excuse, you know? I like messing with people. I like the concept that in some way I'm more clever or amusing or hilarious or, simply put, I'm better than the rest of them. I'm better and I deserve to get what I want. And I want to mess with people and I want to hurt people. And since A, I gotta possess people to survive, I might as well enjoy the process as well, you know, dog? I want to take over the multiverse because yeah, it extended far beyond something as noble as helping people. I wanted to take over because I could. And because it was fun. And because I couldn't be stopped. I wanted the power to enslave everything. The power to enslave everything. But I can't do that, can I? Because of you, right? You're the voices Error hears, aren't you? The voices Error always talks about, always chats with. You're one of them, beyond the code. You're what I was warned about. You're what he was talking about, beyond all of my known existence, beyond the game. 
You're toying with error, asking him questions. We're all your toys. Every single thing I've seen, every universe, every single creature I've come across or possessed, every bit of data is something you are capable of manipulating, right? And now, I got your attention, just like he warned me against. Y you know, I won't stop, right? I want to keep possessing peeps and running around and having a radical time. That's what you want, right? That's what you're looking for, to be amused and have a laugh? Well, you're in luck. That's what the Fresh is here to do. No worries, my good old chums. I'll keep it up. Everything. Right? That's how you're talking to me right now? Right? You're amused by me. <laughs> Wicked bra, I'm glad. I'll just keep... I, I'll just keep up my dated lingo. I'll heal you right into every situation and make a joke of myself. And then when peeps drop their guard, I'll do something creepy, or hilarious, or both! <laughs> That's what you want. That's what you want? Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Or worse, whatever you're capable of. I... I'll do what you want. I promise. Just... just... Don't kill me. Please. And that's the monologue, and I was like, Oh my god, this is a really interesting and deep complex character. And, like, he's purely motivated by just the want and need to survive, right? Because that's, like, the only real instinct that a parasite would have, just to survive. But, like, when confronted with this knowledge of a meta-existence like this, wow, it's gotta be enough to drive a person insane, right? And that's why I think Fresh is so interesting. He's just a super complex character. And it really kind of sucks in some ways that, like, whenever he's brought into, like, fan fictions, the stuff is never utilized. I think it's just because it's on a roleplay blog, and the roleplay blog never got as big as the Ask Era blog ever did. So, you know, it's the level of even being known about is super duper low. So the amount of people who do know this lore are probably no longer in the fandom. So, like, I'm probably one of the only people who's, like, really active and out here screaming about it constantly. <laughs> who knows about this? And I just think that is super cool that, like, there's this, like, level of stuff to Fresh that no one ever, like, talks about. And I wish more people did, because it's super interesting to think about. Like, he's just out here trying really hard to not upset his overlords, essentially. Like, ah, oh, man, it's super cool, and I like to play with the idea a lot in my head. Like, how would he react in this situation? What would he do? Would he do... Like, would he do something funny? Would he do something scary? Would he, like, just try to leave? You know, because on one hand, putting his life in danger increases the tension of the situation and therefore would make more people want to be like, Ooh, this is interesting. More people will tune in, right? And then more people will want to make more stuff with him. But at the same time, putting himself in danger is still an issue because, you know, there's still, like, the in-universe consequences of stuff like that. Like, oh, maybe Fresh could do this and it'll entertain people enough that they'll be like, oh yes, let him live. But what if people decide that they just want to kill him off for the drama of it all? You know, like what constantly happens to Papyrus. But I'm not here to talk about Papyrus, I'm here to talk about Fresh. Anyways, so I think Fresh is super duper neat and I want to kiss him. Damn him. Anyways, so... Fresh is really interesting, a really complex character, and I wish more people would write about his existential crisis. It's really weird, like, he shows up a lot in, like, reader insert fix, like, especially the ones that involve outcodes. But, like, even in those fix, he's never really a, a romantic interest. And I don't know why he seems like one of the most popular outcode stances, right? Like, he was super big before Nightmare and Dream and all the other motherfuckers out there that I don't really care about that much. Sorry. But, like, I just, eh. They just don't catch my interest like Fresh does, or the others even. And still, Fresh is like, he's like the B-list? Even though he's one of the most well-known ones, like, I remember seeing this uh, video that analyzed the Undertale fandom and Fresh was mentioned, and then the Underfill version of Fresh was mentioned, and the Underfill humanized version of Fresh was mentioned, and how there's still a whole bunch of content for this subset of a subset of a subset of the fandom, and that, that's really interesting, but at the same time, Fresh still isn't, like, given a lot to do ever. Like, he kind of just shows up, and is a joke, and then he leaves. And I guess in some way that's probably, like, the best ending for him as, like, a person with his own autonomy, who is self-aware of this stuff, like, he just shows up, because that will continue his existence, but he doesn't do anything, he doesn't put his own life in danger, it's not stressful for him personally, he's just like, I made my, uh, required appearance, and now I get to live another week, bye, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think that's really interesting, 
I wish more stuff like this would be explored in like popular series that involve the multiverse. Like for instance in Underverse. I know Fresh shows up a couple times, but he's kinda just like I don't know how else to describe him except Fresh is like the mailman because outcodes just haven't discovered that smartphones exist or whatever. You know, like he's just there to do a task. He just he, there he is, in the background, just chilling, vibing, doing nothing though. And I think it'd be more interesting if like uh since they're exploring the meta stuff of the multiverse anyways, if they would just imply mention something, you know? Like, because I think it'd be really cool. It's a missed opportunity to not bring it up, honestly. Because, like, Fresh is just there like, haha, this is really funny. You guys are gonna, like, do something and it's gonna make a whole bunch of people mad and everyone's like, what are you talking about? And it's like, oh, don't worry about it, ha. Huh? You know, like, even in passing, just the acknowledgement of it would be really interesting. It would it'd, it'd bring, like, this knowledge more to the forefront of people's minds, because a lot of people don't know about it in general. It's kind of like, um, on, to a lesser extent, there's some things about Fresh, like, for instance, his outfit. A lot of people will draw it in a bunch of different ways. I once saw someone draw the orange collar of his coat as, like, a valedictorian sash thing for some reason, and, like, it's fair to them, like, it's a confusing looking outfit, a lot of colors, a lot of stuff going on, but like it is a blue, white, and purple windbreaker that has an orange and purple collar on it. And he's got a polo underneath with a popped collar, which means it's also short sleeves because that's just how polos are. There's no such thing as a long sleeve polo as far as I know. I mean, there probably is, but with the style that it is and like nine, it's a short sleeve, trust me. Anyway, so now I'm drawing him holding the flowers, and the flowers that he's holding are actually, well, coriander, mauve, carnations, and magenta lilacs. I chose those colors because they're very pretty, and I like those colors. There's other reasons for it, but whatever. I, I honestly forgot. It's been so long since I drew this. But I just thought the flowers were pretty, and they were in colors that would contrast with his outfit enough, you know? Because, like, I guess I could have... Maybe putting in some more yellow flowers would have been a nice contrast, too. I would have to have looked up what that is. Maybe dandelions, because dandelions are really cool, but they're also considered a weed. You know, people want to try to get rid of them. It's kind of like interesting meta analysis. I think I did a really good job with the flowers too. Like for instance, I drew the carnation petals because I'm a freak of nature and I hate being alive, I guess. But also at the same time, the lilacs were more abstractly done because God, I would rather set fire to space than attempt in any way to try drawing the individual flowers in a lilac bush. Not like a lilac bush, but like a bushel, because they're always in like these big blobs, essentially, right? Of petals and leaves and teeny tiny little flowers. Just like a hundred flowers on each fucking chunk, and it's very annoying. Trust me, I love lilacs. Painting them is a pain in the ass. So yeah, that's the nice little bouquet he's holding. He's just supposed to be like very handsome. Because I think he's handsome and oh, also uh, one of the moth carnations is like on his lapel, his collar. Because I thought that would look nice, you know, like not only is he holding the bouquet, he's got one in his shirt because he's a handsome gentleman. He's not really a gentleman, he's a, a, a little bastard of a person. But don't worry, we love him all the same. I think that I could have done better with like the leaves and the foliage in the bouquet because it's very bright green, it's like very intense neon lime. I could have made it more toned down, like a little bit, a little bit less saturated, what darker, maybe a smidge more blue tinted. I think that would have looked really good, but on one hand, I'm pretty good at drawing flowers, I'd like to think. On the other hand, it is a pain in the ass to draw flowers, so I'd rather not draw flowers. You know what I mean? Like, you can be good at something and still not like doing it, right? And I kind of broke from the pattern uh, that his glasses are supposed to be in. Like, it's just supposed to be like one half of each lens is yellow and one half of each lens is uh, blue. But I kind of did it in like an every other thing because I think it would look more visually interesting for this piece at the very least. I had a bunch of, uh, I had a tough time figuring out what to do with the background because I wanted him to look handsome and so attractive in like one of those scenes from a manga where it's just like shimmers and pretty colors. But, you know, I'm really happy with how the end image came out, so... I hope you liked the video, even if it's a little bit janky in some places, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!